welcome to another segment of the Asa Book Club Moment. And I'm glad to be here with you. My name is Linda Goldfarb, and I'll be your host at this time. I've got another great Asa author, and her name is Becky Harling. And she has a great book that's out, and I've got it right here. It's called Rewriting Your Emotional Script, Erased Old Messages, Embrace New Attitudes. And if you know anything about me, I am an attitude woman. So, Becky, this is perfect. This is a great book, and I know that more than likely there was something that happened in your history that said, you know, I need to go through some rewriting in my life. Absolutely. For me, Linda, that event was um, childhood sexual abuse that didn't mm. resurface until I went through breast cancer. Mm. And uh, then as I was going through the healing process, I thought, you know, there have been some significant messages that have been written on my heart in childhood. Mm. And those messages have had a profound effect on who I am today. And they're not working for me anymore. Mm. I need to change them. I need to start living in the truth of who God says I am. Now, you talk about an emotional script. That's, that's what you bring out in the book. So can you share with us, what, what is that emotional script? Is that what you're talking about, those old messages? Sure. It, you know, <laughs> our emotional script really is developed in childhood. Okay. And it's the combination of our God-given personality plus all the messages written on our hearts mm -hmm. through circumstances, yes. significant voices, events mm -hmm. in our lives. And the truth is, all of our emotional scripts are marred. And, you know, that's one of the, the phrases that I, I've used in the past is uh, significant phrases or significant words from insignificant people can destroy a life. Yes. And that's what I'm thinking of as, as you're bringing out this, what the, the emotional script is. Absolutely. And as children, we can't edit those messages. Mm -hmm. And so we accept them all as truth. And then we live out of those messages rather than living out of the truth of who God says we are. So we almost have to have permission to go back and to rewrite some of the script, which is, which is what you're telling us here. Now, when well, I guess more it should be why should women rewrite it? I, I kind of think that it's because they're probably not very happy where they are. But what are, what are you suggesting to us why the women should rewrite their script? Because oftentimes those messages come out in their adult life. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they find themselves getting really an angry at their husbands. And, okay. and there's a trigger there maybe from something that happened in their childhood. Or they're living out of a really low, poor self-esteem mm -hmm. or out of shame based messages and that's not how God wants us to live no. he wants us to be confident and realize that we are his child okay now is there is there a way that we are to know that we need to rewrite our script is just everyone that's unhappy you need to rewrite your script or what what do you say generally God uses a crisis in our life oh okay yeah and you know a crisis Come, I, I love the Chinese figure for crisis because it means dangerous opportunity. And I love oh, that. That is true. And so when sometimes when there's a crisis, like in my case, it was breast cancer. That okay. was a big crisis. So that crisis woke up the old memories. And a crisis in our life, like a divorce, a death in the family, all of a sudden you may find that there are old messages that are rising up in you and you need to take a look at those and, and rewrite those messages with the truth of God's Word. So how do we go about doing that then? We, we realize we go through a crisis and all of a sudden we, we do start having these messages and I mean even in, in getting those messages do we start going where's this coming from? I mean do we have thoughts like that? What kind of thoughts do we have when these messages start raising their head. Yeah, let me give you an example. Okay, okay. Good friend of mine, godly man. He's in his probably late 60s, early 70s, and he's an elder at his church. His whole life he was told he was stupid as a little kid mm -hmm. because he had dyslexia. So he had a hard time reading. And he said to me, he said, "You know, Becky, even today when I'm asked to read scripture out loud, I get very panicked inside." And he mm -hmm. said, "I'm real after hearing you talk, I need to rewrite my emotional script. And I need to tell myself, no, I'm not stupid. I'm mm. smart. I have the, the intelligence that God has given me for all that I need. And that's, that's actually really incredible for a man. Yeah. I know more women are apt to do some of this because they're 
talking more, but for man to be moved to that really does kind of share the power of your book yeah. and helping to, I think, in a very probably gentle way, help us to move forward to take action because we do need to take action. So can all of the old messages be, can they be completely erased or rewritten or what are we dealing with here? What have you found? You know, I have found that you can erase them, but there's still a little bit of a shadow there oftentimes. Okay. Okay. And so the process of rewriting needs to take place continually. Oh. It's like Paul says in Romans 12, that you be made new by renewing your mind. Mm -hmm. And so when those old messages, there might be a new trigger and those old messages come back, you might need to do a little more erasing. But you can get there and you can rewrite your emotional script and live out of a new script that God gives you. But you have to be persistent. Absolutely. And, and I guess recognizing that, oh, naming it for what it is. No, this is one of those old messages. I'm, it's, it's coming back yes. again. I've got to go back and I've got to apply, yes. apply something to it. And when you say with God's word, is, is that what you're using as the structure to rewrite? Is using God's word to say, this is who I am, as, as you shared with the man who was told, well, I'm stupid. No, I'm not. I'm not stupid. Yeah. There, you know, I found in the book of Matthew, in the Beatitudes, mm -hmm. that Jesus gave us a step-by-step -step process to rewrite our emotional script. And if we'll go through that process and take each Beatitude as another step in the path, it is it's a wonderful way to rewrite our emotional script. And so that's the process that I've outlined in the book. Okay. One step at a time. It's not overwhelming. And any woman out there can do this. Okay. Now what about the woman who says, Becky, I'm sorry, but I'm beyond hope. I'm beyond any of this. I want, to, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to yeah. look into the camera and I want you to talk to her. And I want you to say to her what, what she needs to hear. I want to tell you that that is a lie. There is not any woman out there who is beyond hope. I have watched Jesus Christ transform not only my own life through this process, but the lives of countless other women, women who were addicted to meth, women who have been alcoholics, women who have been sexually abused. You are never beyond hope because the the, the truth is that Jesus Christ is the holy healer, and he provides the hope you need. Mm. Share with us, if you would, your website so we can get a hold of you. Yeah, my website is www.beckyharling.com. Very easy, and you can get there. I have a blog there. I'd love to interact with you, so you can contact me there, and I'd love to hear from you. And the best thing is to go out and get a copy of her book. It's called Rewriting Your Emotional Script, Erase Old Messages, Embrace New Attitudes. And with us, a new attitude is going to make it all work. And that's what we need to have. Thank you so much for being here with us for this segment of the Awesome Book Club Moment. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you.